guys, it's Kelly here from Kelly & Co and today I'm going to be planting some seeds for my container cut flower garden. Um, I haven't got all the ones I want yet but I'm going to start now. I've already set up a 36 cell and a 24 cell with um, potting mix but I've got these two 6 cells here that I'm going to show you how I do the soil. So, I use the Yates Black Magic Sea Breathing Mix. Um, it's already got a fertilizer in it and it just has really good results for me. So what I do is I get a container and I put the soil in here and I wet it and then I mix it up because I want the soil pre-moistened so that when I put it in the cells there's no air pockets or anything. The soil's not going to collapse, nothing's going to go wrong. Um, so you want it so it clumps together like this, but um, no water is dripping out. So I just mixed up a bit extra to do these little ones. Um, I'll move this out of the way. And all I do is get this south upon it and just smash it in. It's so easy. And then I just rub off the extra soil, compact it a little bit, and then there you go. Super easy. So I'll just quickly do the other one, and then I'll go over what seeds I'm using. I'm normally an indoor plant kind of girl, but I really want cut flowers for the summer and spring to have in the house and gift to people, especially around Christmas. And I'm doing it all in containers, so there's no fluffing about with earth and bugs and spiders and that kind of stuff because I'm not into that. Take a little bit out. You are going to get a little bit dirty doing this, but it's okay. So that one's done as well. Just get rid of this and clean this hand off a wee bit because <laughs> it's covered in dirt. But that's right, that happens. So I've got a whole lot of seeds from Susie Ripley Gardening. She has the most gorgeous website with the most awesome variety of flowers. Um, you'll see that most of the flowers I'm doing are more of like golds, dark reds, whites, peaches, apricots, that kind of thing. There's not really any pinks. I'm not really a pink girl. Um, and you can get pink flowers everywhere. So I wanted to use flowers that were different. So always check the back of your packets to see when and how you should sow your seeds. Um, like this one is a surface sow. Don't cover with any dirt, but some of them you just make the hole, put the seed in, and then cover it over. So I'm going to start with the 24 seed cell. I've got my little name thingy majiggies. I can't remember what you call them. I hate it when I have mind blanks. But I always name all these first before I start sewing so I don't get confused. Um, so I've got two surface sewing ones which is the snapdragon madam butterfly dark red i'll put photos up here of what they look like when they are actually grown and the china aster king size apricot which is this one here so i'm going to sew these ones in here so you can rip it off all um that's kenzie if you can hear that oh Seeds should come in foil packets um, so that they're nice and dark and dry. You don't want any moisture to hit them before you plant them. So it's a foil packet like that. I'm going to tip these ones out. And you get different amounts of seeds in different packets. Like the China Aster has 50 seeds. Um, so, they're so tiny. So all we do is... Put one, maybe two in each cell. These are so tiny, it's 
difficult just to get one. You can get these little things that um, pop out the seeds by themselves, um, like individually, but I'm not going to faff around with that. So I'm going to do nine of each. And <laughs> I can hear Kenzie. Um, I'm going to reseal it because what I'm going to do is once these have become seedlings and I've put them into the containers, I'm going to sew another lot in here and put them in the prop box. That way I'm going to have a constant growth of flowers over spring and summer. And then the snapdragon, which is so gorgeous. I'm obsessed with this dark red colour. It's so pretty. Oh my god, these are so tiny. They're like little poppy seeds. Oh my god. It's amazing that a full plant and a flower can grow from a tiny little seed. You probably can't even see it. It's those tiny little black specks on my hand. So god knows how I'm going to sew these ones. But here we go. All of the flowers I've chosen are um, made, will grow in to have long stems and to um, grow as cut flowers. So they're all going to be just fine when I do cut them. They're probably, the blooms should last once cut on all of these, like the 27 to 12 days, which is pretty good. And you can always add those little packets of um. You know when you get a bunch of flowers and you get that little pack of like powder that you put in the water, you can buy that on its own. And you can put that in the water to make them last a bit longer. Oh my god, they're so tiny. It literally just looks like dirt on my hand. But it's seeds. I need one more. Oh god. There we go. So, I'll get my little sign. What did I do? Chinese Aster and Snapdragon Madam Butterfly. So, I'll put one here and one here. So, these three rows are the Aster and these three rows are the Snapdragon. And that is how easy it is. So, there's a surface so I don't do anything with it. This is my 36 cell. It's really difficult to see. No, I can't really get a good view, but they're in little punnets like this. So it's really quite handy. And then it's got a tray underneath. I got this wee set up from Marta 10 Mega and it was $7. So in here, I'm going to do the Cosmos White Cupcake, which is really awesome. It only has one petal, so it's like, this I'll put the picture up. I'm gonna do that amazing grey poppy, which is awesome. It's like um tones of like a dark blue and grey, and then the zinnia queen lime red, which is such a cool looking flower. It's probably the pinkiest flower that I have. So these are all ones that you make a hole for. So I'm just gonna go and stick my finger in each cell to make a wee hole. They do say how deep to do them, but I kind of just wing it and hope for the best. And it usually works, so that's fine. So all of these um, seeds are going to go into my greenhouse, my indoor greenhouse, um, and they will be on a heat mat with a grow light, so they should germinate pretty quick. So I'm going to do these ones, and again with these ones I'm only going to do half, and then I'm going to do the other half a wee bit later, because I'm growing them inside, germinating them inside, um, it's a bit easier, I have a bit more leeway with time. Thank God these seeds are a bit bigger. It's these ones here. So, I'll pop these in. So when I pre-moistened the soil, I just did it with water, um, as it does already have a slow-release fertilizer in it. 
but I am going to water it with um, the, let me just do this in here, the um, Yates seaweed tonic to start off with. So I've put that in, so I remember, and then I'm just going to push the soil back over the seeds. Kenzie does not want to nap today. Poppy, amazing, great. I'm guessing these are going to be tiny little seeds as well. Yes. They're literally poppy seeds, obviously. So I'm just going to have to do a few in each because they're so tiny. As long as you get a seed in each cell, you're fine. So that's the Poppy Amazing Gram. So excited to get these ones growing. And then I have the Cosmos White Cupcake, which is such a cool, unique flower. These seeds are a lot bigger. Um, and I'll pop these in. If you don't have a grow tent and all like a sun bulb and a heat mat and everything, you can still do this. You don't even need to buy the um, cells. You can use like yogurt containers, like those little jelly pots, anything like that. You don't need to go out and buy all the gear to make it work. I mean, they didn't back in the day and they still grew flowers and everything. Um, I just use it because I have it and it's quicker and I grow a lot of plants. So I kind of need it all. Um, the one thing you do want to spend your money on is a good soil. I always say this, like even with your indoor plants and everything, a good soil is key. Right. That is the white cupcake done i'm pretty excited now in these two six cells i'm going to do the moulin rouge sunflower which is a dark red kind of um bronzy sunflower so pretty um it will only grow one flower at a time obviously because they're so big but um so I'll probably reseed these three times so I get like a constant, see we foil pack it, a constant growth of um, sunflowers. Oh my God, what is wrong with me today? So I'm just gonna go through and make the holes. Sunflowers are so easy to grow and it's a really good project for kids. Um, you can get mini versions as well, which my daughter grew last summer and that was really satisfying. You can get wee kits. Oh my god, these are such pretty seeds. Look, they're like a metallic blue. Oh, so pretty. Um, and then once they've grown them, they can harvest the seeds, which is really awesome. They can either replant them or they can dry them and you can use them in cooking or snacks or anything like that. So it's a really easy, fun project for kids over summer, like even like in the school holidays, Christmas school holidays. And you can get the kits that come with the seeds, the pot, label, and it comes with like a little back sheet and um, what you can do with the seeds and the flowers. And it comes with the um, soil pellets, they're like little rum pellets and discs. And then you just soak them in water and they turn into soil. So that's them. I really should have made two labels for this one because they're in separate punnets, but I'll probably put them in the same tray. So that is them all done. So I've already pre-moistened the soil and I don't want to overwater them. So in my favourite wee spray bottle I've got a mix of water in my Yates seaweed tonic 
and I'm just going to go over all of them and give them a good misting. And you want to keep the soil moist while they're germinating, so light, heat, moisture is key when you're germinating seeds. You can run into some seeds that need to be um, like soaked in water or they might need to be like nipped with a knife. Um, that's just how they need to be done to germinate. Um, so just make sure you read the instructions on the back of your packets. Just to be safe, I always read them because I do not know everything about gardening and flowers. Um, I learn as I go. So thank you so much for watching this. When we get um, seedlings, then I'll do another video on how I transplant them to my containers. And then hopefully we'll have some amazing, amazing flowers for spring and summer. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.